So, um, Simio, yes. you, you, we were having <laughs> so to linger <laughs> nine. So, so we were saying that the way you package your CV yeah. depends on the industry that you are in. Yes, yeah, sure. And uh, you, you said that your photo shouldn't always be there. It so should or should not. Should should or should not. What you're applying for. De de depending on what you're applying exactly. for. Exactly. All right. Let me uh, let's let's shift gears to the next thing. Sure. Uh, when you are applying for a job, and um, it's 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 for, let's say, uh, different industries. Mm -hmm. Do we should we? And, and you said they de it depends yes, on the industry. Does it also affect the font of the CV, the font type or mm -hmm. the font size? Does mm -hmm. that matter? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the font size and font type matter in all CVs. Mm -hmm. um, reason is we have to choose on fonts that are attractive. There are some fonts that are like, say, they're too flat. Okay. Yeah? Mm -hmm. But as we talk about fonts, um, uh, let me just also make writing some uh, academic papers. Mm -hmm. Does the same apply for CVs that you have specific fonts for CVs? Not really. Uh -huh. uh, um, because uh, you just have to ensure that um, whatever you have written there is somebody can read it. Mm -hmm. But again, does your um, font type really um, bring out some good professionalism? Because leave alone, like say, we are talking about the academy, they talk about Rome, the Times New Roman. You know, if you go into that, people think that that is a standard. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Yes. And uh, if you are applying for a job and you have no experience, yeah, what do you do? <laughs> <laughs> you don't have the, the experience, but you, you need that job. And you need that job. So why do you need it when you're not uh, qualified for it? You just graduated. You have some experience. What experience. Every job has its own qualification. Like somebody who just graduated, um, you'll come in this organization and maybe say as a graduate trainee or an intern at a chi, and things like that. And those opportunities, they um, have different demands in terms of the qualification somebody should have. Mm -hmm. Somebody who's just a recent graduate. So you already you fit in that category. So why will you want a job for somebody who has five years experience? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, so now you're catch for you again to get that job. Some people again don't get this job because they're applying for jobs that they don't have the qualifications. Mm. Yeah. And, apply, uh, uh, and, and is it bad to apply for a job that needs five-year five year experience mm -hmm. and you have less than that or even a year? Because there will be somebody who is better than you who needs that job, mm. who qualifies for that job. And now let me so take you through the short listing, how it's done. Uh -huh. We'll have a criteria. When you're picking, even if it's a system, 5 years experience you've already indicated there. Nowadays, you are too much into the digital world. Uh -huh. The system itself will just reject you because you don't have the year of experience. You will indicate there yourself. Maybe there's a, a provided form you're uh -huh. filling there. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh, numbers of experience, 3 to 5, uh -huh. 10 or something. Uh -huh. So it's you again who indicate there I have less than one. And they are looking for five. Oh, so, so, the, so the system, if the system again it just automatically disqualify you. So I couldn't have a bad that's how it is. Or if it's again, it's now manual, it's the HR says, come to me, I'll draw it up, okay? Ram has five years experience, or I have it. Five years experience, 10 years experience, less than, though from there. So why should I bring you then, I'm um, just making it a bulky for no reason, when I have somebody who has this experience to take on the job? <laughs> That's like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, uh, don't lie. Don't lie. If you don't have it, you don't have it. If you have it, you have it. That's how the job market looks like. Does that reduce our chances of getting employment now? Big time. Why do we invite you for the interview? Because you've, there's a way you've used your tool to market yourself. And we looked at it and said, hey, Sam is a good candidate. We invite you now. Let's come to hear from the horse's mouth. Mm. One will invite you to really establish, to validate whatever you wrote there. It's a fact. It's true. From the interviews, you can tell this person lied in the CV. Still, uh, uh. there's a background check that is done. We'll call, perhaps say, your employer will say that you work there. Mm. Say, hi, Sam, how are you? Uh, so and so applied for a job in this organization, so, and things like that. So don't lie. 
when 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 you you are writing your CV, yeah. there is that section for referees. Absolutely. Uh, uh, should what kind of referees should we be looking out for, especially for a CV? Mm -hmm. Do we have some that we should actually just avoid? Do we have those uh, you know specific ones that actually even reduce our chances of even getting uh, uh, you know that job? Yes. Mm -hmm. One of the questions we have to ask ourselves is why do we have that section in a CV? Why do you think we have that section we have just referees? Or what or exactly? Is it? Yes, you know people just get really, it there. Uh. <laughs> but they don't really... Now if you ask yourself and answer correctly that question, uh. you really know how and why you should put there some information. So don't just choose anyone? Don't just choose anyone. Few of the things we should not when you are um, giving out your referees. Number one, um, ensure, like now you say, um, you, like for you, you have a good number of years of experience. Mm. And today, if I check your CV, you are even indicating your primary school teacher. As a referee? Does a referee change with time? Yes. It changes with time. That's why even your CV changes with time. There's some information in your CV that um, you, they should not be there. Uh -huh. Yes, uh -huh. like you, you, you've gone through so many jobs and you're still incurring them here. And even looking at the relevance of those experiences to the job you're applying for is not so needful. So you have to remove them. And now, that's also you have to update your replays. As, assuming you're working at a particular organization, organize, organization X, yeah. there are people that you're working with there, Absolutely. your bosses, mm -hmm. people of some, you know, uh, they know you. They, they, they know you. Hmm. Uh, how do you you know, go by uh, to, uh, to choose who amongst all these mm -hmm. bosses <coughs> or all these people that I know mm -hmm. ought to appear in my CV? A referee is somebody who knows you. Like they know your capacity, your work-related um, experience. You get it? That they can confidently say something positive or negative about you in regards to the job you're applying for. So is, is you come to me too, you, no, you meet in the morning, hi, 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 mom. Like uh, your brother, your dad, there's some people, people include there. No. Because we really need to know how is Sam when it comes to doing his job. That's why we're inviting you for this job. So it should be somebody who has an experience with you. Someone I've who has seen this person with work. you. Yes. And they can attest either positively or negatively about you. Regardless <laughs> of the title they hold in that in particular that organization. organization. Yeah. Though we may prefer, like, somebody who is senior is mm. the person you'll be reporting to, mm. so they'll be monitoring and evaluating you. So, so, it's not a, so is, it, is it a must that you go for someone who is senior in that particular organization um, or industry? Um, who's been in, uh, kind of uh, supervising you? It's better. It's better. What if the person supervising you doesn't know you as much as the... the uh, 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 Even your colleagues are okay. You can use, use your colleague. Because they know you. Uh -huh. Yeah. So you can even use a fellow colleague yes. on your CV. Yeah, you can. No matter how s small they may be in that organization. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, but now you see the market really wants somebody who is a bit senior. Because in CV... The, the notion people want you know to see titles yes titles, heavyweights titles. on the cv but essentially why do we have referees somebody who can really am um, a test of you uh -huh. you get it uh -huh. and if you work in any organization even starting from the get man mm. to the ceo all of them they know you but you have to be very particular yeah at least also maybe a way just to sell yourself as well <laughs> When you are sending your CV, yeah. assuming it's, it's um, online, should it also be accompanied by anything? Is it okay mm. to just send the CV as it is? Sending the CV as it is? As it is. Just say, uh, greetings, mm. uh, following the application you made, blah, 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 attached here is my CV. Is there anything else you wish it should be added there? Cover letter? Absolutely. They have, maybe they have not asked. These things work together. Maybe they've not asked. No, you're making an application. What is a cover letter? Uh -huh. That's the question again. People should need, just need to understand. So most of these applications you need to, when you're making an application, one should have a cover letter and a CV. Uh. Yeah. 
So if whether they ask and, or not, yes. cover letter should be there. Yeah, include a cover letter. And a cover letter now, if it's an online thing, it can come in different forms. And one, you can use a section of your email to write a cover letter. Then you finish by just saying, please, for more details, um, see my attached CV. It's already a cover letter. Or you can just have, um, following your application or something like that, the mm -hmm. advertisement, mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, attached is my cover letter and a CV. You get it? Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. and Look, a cover letter is what makes somebody to be interested in your CV. So between the cover letter and the CV, where do they go for first? <laughs> uh, we look at the cover letter and the CV. It's the cover letter first, yes. then the CV. Yes. Not, it's like not, not the other way you. You're selling yourself then, okay, now for more details, uh -huh. because essentially a cover letter is just a summary of your CV. For those who write uh, whatever they're applying for, mm. you see the details that are in the cover letter. Those details, they, they normally indicate those things at the email, mm -hmm. at the email section. Yeah. Uh, blah, blah, blah. My name is so and so. I'm applying for this yeah. job, and the uh, touch is my mm -hmm. CV. Mm -hmm. Those details are, should be on the cover letter, but they apply, the, the, but they use those words on when sending the email, and then they have an attachment of the CV. That's not recommended. Take it again. I didn't get your question right. You said you have the cover letter. Yes. There's information that you write. Yes. Yeah, on the cover letter. Mm -hmm. Like what information? You say who you are. Uh, like yes. Um, it has sections. Uh -huh. Cover letter. On you just need letter. to understand that. Mm -hmm. the, offici uh, the official letter, the way it is. Mm -hmm. But now you just have to understand that it has um, some sections that really need to capture your information. Mm -hmm. Number one. But now just knowing, when you talk about first paragraph, what goes there? When you talk about second paragraph, what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. When you come to the third paragraph, what should you include there? So people again miss big time because they really don't know. They just think it's just another letter. Mm -hmm. But yeah. in, 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 you said that it's, it, 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 it is what sells you. Yes. And it is what makes someone to be want interested to live and look at you. Your, uh, Some may have that information as the email and attach the CV. Yes. That's so what you, I'm asking. That's what I'm asking. Yes. Is so that advisable? Can, yes, it is. You can have it different form. Number one, in that section, the body section of your email, you can use that part to write as your cover letter. Mm -hmm. And then you attach the, 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 CV. the CV. You get it? Mm -hmm. Or you can just have like one line just to really lead someone to your attached documents. Mm -hmm. And now that is the cover letter and your CV. Another thing <laughs> on the CV. Hobbies. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> what about them? <laughs> there, of, of course, there's some movies that you may not want to also, uh, you, you may have that maybe you, if, if you decay there, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's a charm. Do okay. we have, how, how do you go by to select, you know, your, the, the, hobbies the hobbies that are particular to that but job yeah. that you're applying for? Is, well, it a, is, is it a sensitive area? That it is. Hobbies and interests. It is, big time. Hobbies, they can sell you short as well. How? You have to look at the job, the nature of that job. Like for you, I know you are in journalism, right? Yes, Media. yes, yeah. There are some hobbies that come with this job. Yeah. You get it? Yeah. Maybe say traveling as a journalist, mm -hmm. um, research and reading. Mm -hmm. You get it? Mm. Now, let's say another job like um, a doctor, mm. research and reading, mm -hmm. swimming. How is swimming relevant in a doctor's job? And you indicated it's a hobby. Assuming you like drawing or, or, or singing. Well, people love so many things. But the question we should ask ourselves is how relevant is that hobby to this job that I'm applying for? So you should choose a hobby that is relevant, relevant to, that job. to that job. What if you don't have one that is relevant to that job? No, you, 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 you like traveling. Everybody it's, has a hobby. That's why now it takes us back to something we call career choices. When you're making career choices, we also are informed by their hobbies. Uh -huh. And so some people just go into some careers because they, they, they just thought it was time for me just certain thing and they really didn't think about it. That's why some people are enjoying their jobs today. Like mm. for you, I know you're enjoying your job because you love maybe talking to people. <laughs> and maybe <laughs> another journalist somewhere <laughs> who again is in this job uh. and just wondering, hey, when will these shows end so that I go home, I disappear from this place? 
Yeah. So now that begins to help us understand that hobbies are important. So mm. look at the relevance of your hobbies. Mm -hmm. In them there. George, I want a us to few. I want us to finish this conversation. Sure. Uh, um, let me just give you uh, one minute to or uh, thirty seconds to uh, have a final word. Talk to Kenyans there. That is your camera oh, about you know uh, job seeking. How to how to prepare uh, you know a CV. Just in a nutshell, mm -hmm. your final words to the youth who are watching when you're on Tafta Kazi. Amazing. Wow. Thank you so much for this opportunity, and also thank you so much for viewing. Um, just a few things to mention is that we understand it's a bit tricky to come by some jobs, especially in Africa. But um, considering other factors constant, you can still get a job. And uh, you just have to understand that you have to package yourself well and differentiate yourself from the crowd and you'll get a job. All right. Lastly, uh -huh. a million other people can do what you do. Uh -huh. What can set you apart from them? It's your CV. Mm -hmm and your skills that you're selling there. Wow. That is Thank George, you. George Simiu, an author, a trainer, ah. and HR consultant. <laughs> <laughs> My brother, <laughs> thank you for coming. All right. Thank you, so, too, for no, no, hosting you, me. You, <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. for It's, it, it, it's a pleasure uh, having you. All those who have sent in their comments, we were not able to sample them up as we uh, continue the conversation, but we value your feedback. The hashtag as always is one in the morning. Thank you very much for being with us. That brings us to the end of this morning show. My name is Ram Maguko, and I wish you the best. As you start a new month, go apply for that job. Set your CV straight, and I wish you the best. May God bless you. God bless the work of your hands. Keep it Y254.